if you will, turn with me, amen, to uh, Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, and I want you to go to verse 10. And I'm going to be reading from verse 10 to verse 18. Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18. And I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this word that you have bestowed upon your servant today. Father, I, I thank you, Lord, that you used me mightily to distribute that word, Lord, to your people, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that that word will go forth in power under the authority, under the anointing of your precious Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, that it will go forth, Lord, and it will produce a harvest in the lives of the hearers and the believers in that word. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for just depositing your presence and your Holy Spirit inside of me, Lord. Just fill me up today, Lord, that the, your believers will feast off the overflow. Yeah. And Lord, may if there be any hindrances, Lord, that may try to come to the minds of the believers today or come in this place, may they be removed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Our minds are clear. We have clarity of spirit today to hear what thus says the Lord. Yeah. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. amen. Hold up your Bible. Let's make our declaration. Say, this is my Bible. This is, my Bible. This is God's holy word. This is, God's holy word. This, is the word of truth. this is the word of truth. This is the sword of the spirit. This is this is my sword, this is my sword. And, I'm and I'm dangerous with it. Now give God a hand clap. Amen. Bless Amen. the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18. And it reads like this. Finally. Somebody say finally. finally. My brethren, be strong. Somebody say strong. strong. In the Lord. Somebody say in the Lord. In the Lord. And in the power of what? His Amen. might. Put on the whole, somebody say the whole, the whole. armor of God, armor. that you may be able to what? Stand against the wiles of the devil. Mm -hmm. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. I want somebody to hear that. I'm going to say that verse again. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. I want you to keep your mind open now. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand. Stand, therefore. Somebody say stand. Stand. Having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, somebody say above all. Above all. Taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all, somebody say all, all. the fiery darts of the wicked one. Mm -hmm. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. We just talked about your sword. Mm -hmm. Which is what? The word of God. Verse 18, praying always. Yes. Somebody say pray always. Pray always. With all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. And the title of my message today is Keep Standing. Keep standing. Mm. Keep stand. Turn to your neighbor and say, Keep standing. Keep standing. The Keep standing. devil might have told you this week it's time to sit down. <laughs> the devil might have told you this week it's time to lay down and just go ahead and play dead. Just go ahead and act like, you know, just go ahead and lay down, put your head down, but it's not time to put your head down. Yeah. It's time to keep standing. Yeah. Turn to your neighbor and say, Keep standing. Keep standing. Keep standing. And I know why the enemy did not want me to preach this message this morning. Because courage is needed to stand against evil. Yeah. Courage is needed to stand against evil. The attacks from the enemy 
are going to come at you fast and furious. And his goal is to knock you off your destiny. His goal is to knock you off your destiny. <laughs> he does it to cause fear. <laughs> the enemy causes us to fear, mm -hmm. to act irrational, <laughs> to depend on our flesh. And you know what I realized, too, is that when a boxer wants to overpower you, he'll come at you with a furious flurry. Yeah. And what that is is to get you off balance. Yeah. He wants to hit you so many times and so quickly that it knocks you off your balance. Yeah. That's what the enemy does. Yeah. That's why he brings so many unexpected challenges and things into your life to get you off balance. Yeah. To get your eyes off of Jesus and onto your situation. Yeah. Yeah. He wants to hit you so many times that it causes you to stop standing and fall to the ground and yeah. give up. Yeah. 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 Somebody say keep standing. Keep yeah. standing. He tries to cause us to fear. Fear is such a quick thing. As soon as something happens, fear immediately knocks on the door. Money situation, fear knocks on the door. Employment situation, fear knocks on the door. Something happens with your kids, fear knocks on the door. He wants you to be afraid so you can act out irrationally. He wants you to say something out of your mouth because the devil understands the power of the tongue. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, if you don't think the devil understands the power of the tongue, you don't know your enemy. He knows once you speak something, that's what you, you're making a declaration. So when you decree something messed up, that's what you're going to have. If you say, I ain't never going to get a good car, you ain't never going to get a good car. If you say... I just can't win. I, I just, I, you know what? One time that slipped out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, when so, so many things were happening back to back to back, I was driving one day. I was like, I just can't win. Mm -hmm. How many times have you said that? And I caught myself. I said, those words fall to the ground and die. Because yes. yes. I, I am a winner. Yes. It's not that I can win. I am a winner. Yes. Because I serve a winner. Yes. Oh, come on now. I serve Jesus who won the battle at Calvary. Yes. Oh, come on. come on. I serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yes. I have winners in my DNA. But we speak those things because we think irrational and we depend, sometimes we depend on our flesh when these things come at us. We think, I gotta take care of this in the natural. If somebody lashes out against us, our natural inclination is to lash back out at them. It's a think irrational. I've had that happen to me a few times. Mm. But 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 you know what? It's an attack from the enemy to get you to say something you're not supposed to say. That's right. Somebody yeah. say keep standing. Keep standing. This is not a time to back down. That's right. Turn to your neighbor and say, this is not a time to back down. This is not a time to back down from the fight. Nor is this a time to be timid or fearful. Or act out in the flesh and step out of our Christ-like character. It's not a time for that. Oh, come on now. Because the word of God says in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, For God has not given us a spirit of what? Fear. So it's not time to fear. God didn't give you that spirit. The enemy gave you that spirit. So in order to keep standing, we must not have a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And I believe that when we operate in these three spirits, amen, there is nothing that the enemy can throw to us to, to conquer us. There is nothing that we can't get into that we can't get through when we operate in the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Yes. Somebody say, keep standing. Keep, keep standing. standing. So why? Why? Because God, you know, this means that when we operate in this manner, we're going to keep on standing. Mm -hmm. So the question raised, how do we keep standing? You might be asking me, Pastor, how do I keep standing? I feel the enemy pulling me down. Mm -hmm. How do I keep standing? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. I got a good answer for you. Yeah. Amen. Don't you know the word of God will give you an answer mm -hmm. when you ask it a question? Yeah. So my first point is, you need to recognize you don't have the power. That's right. You don't have the power. Mm -hmm. Turn to your name and say, I don't have the power. Have the power. <laughs> Tell them again, you don't have the power. Have the power. Oh, come on now. Huh? You're not saying nothing bad against if you're stating the facts. That's right. We don't have the power. Come on now. And that's what we the devil will have us confused thinking that we got the power. There used to be this worldly song talking about, I got the power. No, you don't. No, you don't got the power. He has the power. Oh, come on now. God has the power. Listen to what verse 1 says. Amen. Verse 1 says, finally, mm -hmm. finally, my brethren, mm -hmm. be what? Strong in what? The Lord. It didn't say finally be strong in yourself. Mm -hmm. Be strong in your bank account. Mm -hmm. Be strong in your education. It said what? Be strong in the Lord. That means you ain't got it. Yeah. 
You ain't got it. But it's okay if you ain't got it, because he got it. And the good thing is, you know where to get it. Oh, come on now. It says, be strong in the Lord and what? In the power of his might. That's why he said, finally, this is a final note. I told you a couple things, but finally I need you to, to let you know that in your own strength, you can't stand. That's, right. That's why so many people fall, because they're trying to hold themselves up. You can't hold yourself That's up. Right. Only God can sustain yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, come on now. You may have a boss and a CEO, but there's a God above that boss. Right. There's a God above that CEO. There's a God above your bank account. Yeah. We sung a song today, You Reign. That means God's over it all. Yes. Oh, come on now. And, and even though he's high, he still comes down low. Mm -hmm. Do I have some witnesses yeah, in this yeah, church today? Yeah. Somebody say, keep standing. Keep standing. Keep standing. Yeah. Number two, we need to recognize that you have to be equipped to fight this battle. Yeah. You cannot fight this battle with the wrong equipment. Right. Y'all not here. You can't fight this battle with no equipment because you will get beat. Come on now. That's the only way you can stand is recognizing the right equipment. The word of God says in verse 11, put on what? The whole armor of God that you may be able to what? Stand against what? The wiles of the devil. You cannot stand without the armor on. I, I'm just going to make that statement. You cannot stand without the whole armor on. And the reason why he said put the whole armor on, because the enemy is always looking for an opening. He's always looking for to put a foothold to get inside your household, inside your spirit, inside your situation. But you got to put on the whole armor in order to defeat him. That's the only way you're going to stand. Somebody say, keep standing. Keep standing. This is put on the whole armor of God. You have to be equipped to fight the battle. And the reason why we're losing is we're using the wrong weapons yeah. to fight the enemy. Mm -hmm. Number two, how do I keep standing? Number three, I should say. Point number three, recognize who you are fighting. Mm -hmm. You are not fighting your brother. Yes, right. You're not fighting your sister. Mm -hmm. You're not fighting your coworker. Mm -hmm. You're not fighting your children. Yes, right. You're not fighting your mother or your father. Mm -hmm. Come on now, you're not mm -hmm. fighting your neighbor. Recognize who you are fighting. I had this discussion with my daughter this week. The enemy's been coming against us, and I said, you have to recognize your enemy. Your enemy is not your best friend. Mm -hmm. Come on now, church. Because what happens is we see the person, and that's what we think is our enemy. We see the, the, the individual who's coming against us, and we say, this has got to be the enemy. No. That person is a puppet, man. Yeah. That person is a puppet being used by the enemy. Yeah. That's like you fighting a puppet. It's like you beating up a puppet. What's that going to do? When it's the puppet master that's controlling the puppet. Unfortunately, that person is being used by the enemy. So you have to know who your enemy is. Come on now. It, and I love this. It says in verse 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. This is not a flesh and blood fight. If you pick up bullets to try to shoot the devil, you will lose. That's right. yeah. <laughs> All you're doing is wasting bullets. All you're doing is wasting ammo. Because you're not going to defeat the enemy by natural means. And that's what our flesh always tells us to fight this battle. I got to fight this battle. No, you don't. Because this is what the word says. There is a battle going on outside of this physical battle. There is a spiritual battle that is causing this physical battle to happen. Mm -hmm. Oh, I want y'all to get a hold of this now. It, it said, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness. If you think the devil is working by himself, you are mistaken. Come on now. This word tells us when the devil got kicked out of heaven, he brought legions of angels with him. So he is not working by himself. There are a lot of principalities, authorities that are working to get you off track. Oh, come on now. That's why the, the, the attacks are so serious. Think about the man who had legions of demons inside of him. It, it, the devil put 20,000 demons inside of that one man who was trying to kill himself. Think about that. There are spiritual wickedness in what? High places. See, we're looking low, but the battle's up high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I have some witnesses yeah, in this yeah. church that somebody said, keep standing. Keep keep standing. standing. He said, there are spiritual rulers. There are rulers in dark places that are trying to get you from your destiny. 
especially when you come to know Christ, especially right after you come to know Christ. Let me tell you something. The enemy is upset. He understands your destiny. Oh, come on now. I, I was telling my daughter this. I said, you know what? The devil sees where you're going. Oh, come on now. He sees your destiny and where you're going, and he wants to pull you back from that destiny. Come on now. So that's why you have to recognize who your real enemy is. You're not wrestling against the individuals. You're, you're going against spiritual wickedness in high places. Number four, you have to recognize the effective weapons of spiritual warfare. Recognize that you cannot fight the enemy in the natural. Come on, I know it's so easy to fight somebody in the natural. It's so easy to say something bad to somebody in the natural because they're right there. But that's not where the battle is. Come on now. Somebody say keep standing. keep standing. See, the battle is somewhere higher, so you need higher weapons. It says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God in verse 13. He repeats it again. You need, Paul is trying to equip the saints. He said, you need better weapons to fight this enemy. He said, therefore, take on the whole armor of God that you may be able to what? Withstand in the evil day. We got an evil day. Come on now, today is an evil day. There's a lot of evil going on. You can see it in the news. Just turn on the TV. The devil's trying all every trick in the book to come against the believers. Come on, it's the evil day. And in order for us to stand, we have to put on the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God in order to stand. Somebody say, keep standing. Keep standing. It says, therefore, take on the whole armor of God. So, and it says, when you've done all to stand. Do everything you can to stand. Take on that armor so that you can stand. And we sung this song this morning. I'm still standing by the grace of God. How many people are still standing by the grace of God? The enemy knocked our pastor down. He's up by the grace of God. Attacked him with a stroke. He's standing by the grace of God. Who comes back from a stroke at 82 years old? The grace of God. Oh, y'all not hearing me today? Come on now. We, we, come on. That's, that's how we stand, amen, by putting on the whole armor of God. We got to know which weapons are effective in this fight. Amen? So then we go number five. And we begin in the weapon. We need to recognize that the truth will hold you up. The, a lie will bind you up. But the truth will hold you up. Oh, yeah, I hear Let me tell you something. We got to start speaking the truth in love. When you speak the truth, that's when you're free. Yeah. When you speak the truth, and you know what? The truth hurts sometimes, yeah. but you got to speak it. Yeah. Oh, come on now. The truth hurts. People don't like hearing the truth nowadays. And there is this movie there where this guy said, I want the truth. And the guy said, you can't handle the truth. Mm -hmm. But see, you got to speak it. Even if they can't handle it, tell them the truth. Amen? Because yeah. that'll set them free. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Speak yeah. the truth in love in this world. And what I, what I realized, too, is that Amen. It says in this scripture about the truth. It says, stand there for having your waist girded with truth. That means it's a belt. So the belt holds up your pants. Uh, yeah, yeah. Come on now. Yeah, yeah. So you need your belt or your pants going to come down. Yeah, yeah. See, if I didn't have a belt on, it'd be crazy for me preaching up here without a belt with my pants down to my ankles. <laughs> oh, come on. Y'all would think I would pray. Y'all would run me out of here. Yeah, yeah. So the belt holds up your pants and allows you to keep walking. Truth allows you to keep walking. Because if your pants fall down, you're going to trip and fall. Yeah. Truth will keep you. Truth will hold you up. Somebody say, truth will hold you up. The belt of truth. So speak the truth. That's why the devil began things with a lie. He wants you to operate in lies because he's a father of lies. He doesn't like the truth because he can't handle the truth. The truth is he's defeated. Come on now. He wants to tell you a lie that your situation won't come to an end. But that's a lie because God said that situation is going to come to an end. And there is a, an appointed time and a, an appointed destiny. Amen. There's a due season and an appointed time. Amen. Is that all right for somebody here? Keep standing. Somebody say keep standing. The truth will hold you up. Number six. Recognize. Glory to God. Living right will guard your heart. Mm -hmm. You must keep your heart guarded. Mm -hmm. Verse 14b says, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, we must 
guard our heart. The word of God said, protect your heart for out of it flows the issues of life. The devil wants to get to your heart because he knows if he pulls on your heart straight, he can get the rest of your body. He, if he gets your heart, then he can work his way up to your mind and get you to do some things you're not supposed to do. Guard your heart. Right living will guard your heart. Righteousness, right living, living according to the word of God will protect your heart because the enemy is gunning for your heart. He's gunning to get you, amen. And if you get your heart, he can get you to do all kinds of crazy stuff. So protect your heart. Somebody say protect your heart. Protect your heart. Keep standing. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness, guard your heart. Right living will guard your heart. Number seven, recognize the good news will give you peace and keep you walking. Good news. That's why it says in verse 15, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And what I realize as I've gotten older is that I need comfortable shoes. Anybody, any witnesses in here? I need comfortable shoes. Let me tell you something, because if you're going to stand, you're going to need some comfortable shoes. Oh, come on now, church. Y'all y'all have y'all done, done wore some bad shoes and been standing for a while and them corns start hurting. And that little pinky toe start hurting. That's when you know you got some bad shoes on. And that's what this is saying is when you have peace on your feet, amen, you can stand. Oh, come on now. When you got comfortable shoes, you can stand. When you don't have, when you got shoes of stress and, and fear, you're not going to be able to stand. Oh, come on. Your feet going to hurt. Come on now. You got to have some good shoes on. Amen. So this is saying when peace, when you're walking in peace, you can stand. When I got some good shoes on, I can stand for a while. Amen. My feet are comfortable. Amen. Because I need some good shoes. My wife told me the other day, she said, you picking those um, Adidas over these Jordans? She was like, oh, you must be grown. I said, no, I'm comfortable. <laughs> I want to be comfortable. I said, I, 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 as I've gotten older, I want more comfort than I'm trying to look for style. Amen? So, so and what this is, word is saying is that you must guard your feet with peace of good news. When, when there's bad news, you got to overrule it with the good news. Come on, and the good news is the bad news ain't true. If you turn on the news, all you hear is bad news. So turn it off. Somebody say, turn it off. Oh, come on now. You can hit the power button. How many people got a power button on your remote? Turn that news off and hit the power button on your word right there. And turn on the good news, amen, that overrules it. That says even though what the, the economy is going down, you're in a different economy. Oh, come on now. Even though you lost your job, there's another one waiting for you. Oh, come on now. There's something different in this news than what you see on that news. So it's time to turn it off. Somebody say turn it off. And turn on this news, amen. Because all that's in this news is love, is power, love, and a sound mind. If your mind is not right, it's because you're not putting the right stuff in your mind. It's time to get some good news, amen. And when you got the good news, you got peace. You're walking in comfort there. Oh, come on now. Your feet are shut by the peace, the gospel of the good news. You're walking right and you're thinking right, amen. Is that all right? Well, don't, when you got good shoes, don't you feel better? Oh, come on now. So if you got on some bad shoes, if you got some spiritual Mickeys on, it's time to put some spiritual Nikes on or some spiritual Adidas. I like Adidas. They're more comfortable than me. But come on now. He said, the word says, guard your feet, amen, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That's how you can stand. Put on the right shoe. Somebody said, keep standing. Keep standing. Number eight, hallelujah. Recognize your faith is your shield. Your faith is your shield. You cannot lose your faith. The word of God says above all, above all. When he says above all, that means above all. Above all, you got to hold your shield of faith. Because what does that do? That protects you from the fiery darts of the enemy. Hold on to your faith. Hold on to your faith. The devil wants you to lose your faith. He wants you to give up your faith. He wants you to give up holding on to the promises that are in this word. Come on now, because that defeats every fiery dart he throws at you. When you can say, you know what? God's word says something different than what I'm feeling. God's word says something different than what I'm physically seeing. That destroys every fiery dart he's trying to come in. Because it said, above all, what? Take the shield of faith with, with which you can quench every fiery dart of the wicked one. Everything the devil throws at you, you hold up that faith. I got the word, devil. 
I know you threw something at me that I didn't expect, but this shield of faith blocks it because I'm believing something different in this word. Yeah, oh, yeah, come yeah, on yeah, now. Yeah. I know uh, I, I, I lost my job, but faith tells me I got a new one coming. Oh, yeah. come on now. I, I, I know my money's looking funny, but faith tells me that God is the Lord of the harvest and he's bringing a harvest into my hand. Yeah, oh, yeah, come on now. Yeah. I know the world is telling me my kids are lost, but the word tells me my kids are blessed. Yeah. They are a chosen generation, yeah, yeah. a royal police priesthood. Yeah. Oh, do I have some witnesses in this church today? Yeah. Hold up your shield of faith. Because if you lose your faith, you lose your shield. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. Don't lose your faith. That's why the word of God says in Hebrews 10, 23, let us hold what fast the confession of our faith without wavering. Hold on to that faith. Hold on to that word that God gave you. Don't let the enemy take that word. Keep confessing it because it will come to pass. Right. Hold on to that confession of faith. Don't say nothing negative. Don't say I'll never win. Say I am a winner. I'm a winner. I am more than a conqueror because that's what the word said. None of these things move me. That's what Paul said. Oh, come on now. I am more. If God is for me, who can be against me? Hold fast to those words of faith. Hallelujah. Because it says, for he who promised is what? Faithful. faithful. Oh, come on now. I'm holding on because God is faithful. I'm holding on even if I don't see it. I know God is faithful. I know at the right time, he will show up. Oh, come on now. I know at the right time, I may be down to nothing. God is still working things out. I don't see it, but he's behind the scene working it. My faith sees him behind the scene. Oh, come on now, church. I'm holding fast because I know the one who promised is what? Faithful. Yes. Somebody say, keep standing. keep standing. We know that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Faith is what we're hoping for. It's that substance. Substance sounds like something you can see, but it's something you see in the spirit realm. Yeah. I yeah. see it, and I believe it, yeah. and it's going to come to pass. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on now, church. Yeah. I see it in the spirit realm. I see this church out of debt, yeah. and I'm believing it's coming to pass. Yeah. Oh, y'all not hear me. I'm seeing us be above and not beneath because I believe it. Amen. And I will see it. Amen. Is that all right? Hallelujah. I'm holding fast because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I don't see it, but I believe it. Come on now. This world is about seeing stuff. No, I'm about believing. We got to be about believing, even if you don't see it, even if everything in your natural eyes looks totally against you, see that God is for you. Yeah. 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 Oh, come on, church. I, I, I need some witnesses in this house today. Faith is that stuff. Faith is, it is written. Mm -hmm. That's what faith is. Faith is, it is written. <laughs> Glory to God. Faith is, I, I realize, and sometimes we got to get that in our spirit. When the enemy comes with attack, Pull out your word and say, you know what? God got a word against that. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on now. Get your word on your phone or on your Bible. Grab it out. Because the more you speak it, the more it's going to come out of you. Mm -hmm. It is written. It is, it is Faith is, it is written. It is written. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we need to recognize, number nine, your salvation will keep you in your right mind. Because yeah. verse 17 a says, and take the helmet of salvation. We guard our mind by the truth that one day we're going to see Jesus. Yeah. Oh, come on now. I, I'm going through down here, but one day my salvation tells me there's a greater end for me. Yeah. There's something bigger on the other side that keeps me in my right mind. Even though the world is all crazy, my salvation keeps me in my right mind. Yeah. It protects your mind. Letting you know that everything that's happening down here is subject to change. Yeah. My mind tells me that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Come on now. We got to stay in our right mind. You got to protect your mind because the enemy tries to get to your mind to get to your heart to get out your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now, church. Because once you dwell on something and then it gets into your heart, eventually it's going to come out your mouth. That's what he's trying. So we have to protect our head, guard your mind with the helmet of salvation. Number 10, recognize your sword and swing it. A sword is no good if you ain't swinging. That's right. If you got a sword and you ain't swinging, it's a, it's a, it's a souvenir. <laughs> Come on now. It's an it's a article sitting up on your trophy case somewhere. That's not what the sword, sword of the spirit is for. It's for you to swing it. It's for you to swing that sword against the enemy. Come on now. We gotta, and it says, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. God, you've got to swing your sword. 
got to swing your sword. Somebody say swing your sword. Swing we got to say, you got to have that it is written in our spirit. We got to get the word inside of us so that the moment that attack comes, you can swing that sword. And say, wait a minute, I'm dwelling in the secret place of the most high. You come to get me, but I'm in the secret place. Oh, come on now. I'm abiding under the shadow of the almighty. Swing your sword. Somebody say swing your sword. Swing your sword. Keep standing. Hallelujah. The sword of the spirit. Number 11, we need to recognize your need to pray always. We have to pray always. Come on now. Somebody say pray always. always. We got to remember, we can't just pray on Sundays. We can't just pray on Saturdays. We got to pray every day. You need to always be in prayer. At nighttime, in the noontime, you need to always, and you don't have to say no big dissertation. You can just pray a couple words, and God hears your every word. Pray always. I encourage the saying, we need to pray more. Instead of complaining more, we need to pray more. The minute you think about complaining, say, wait a minute, I'm going to pray. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know the devil is defeated when that happens. Yeah. You know what? The devil is defeated because he wants, he's waiting for you to say that wrong thing. He's like waiting, just like in double dust when you're waiting to go. He's just waiting for you to say something bad. He's like, come on, let, let me in. Come on, let me in. And, and, and if, you don't, if you don't say that, you don't let him in. Right. But if you say, wait a minute, it is written. Oh. It is written. So you say it is written, you're like, oh, here we go. <laughs> he can't stand it is written. Come on now, because Jesus dealt with him with it is written. He can't stand it is written. Come on now. But he can't stand prayer. He, he can't stand you saying, you know what, I'm going to pray about this. Mm -hmm. mm, he hate that. Mm -hmm. it, well, he wants you to fight on it. He yeah. wants you, you know what, I'm going to go give this person my peace of mind. I'm going to give this person a piece of my mind. He loves hearing that. But he don't like it. You know what? I'm going to pray about this situation. You know what? I'm going to pray for my enemy. Mm. He hates that. Oh, he hates when you pray for your enemy. He hates when you pray for your enemy and then your enemy turns around and, and, and God works things out in between you. Oh, come on now. The devil hates that. He's waiting for you to say something wrong. But instead of, of complaining, we need to pray. I love this version in the in the New Living Translation in verse 18 of the same chapter, it says, pray in the spirit at what? Okay. All times and on every occasion. Every occasion. No matter what it is. If it's up, if it's down, pray. Pray when I'm up, especially when you're up. Because just so quickly, you can be back down again. Pray when the roof is up and it's sunny and bright outside. Because the rain is coming. Oh, come on now. The storm is coming. And you need to have your roof ready before the storm comes. Come that's why I said pray in every occasion. Yeah. Not just when things are going bad. Because that's our tendency. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Yeah. Lord, help me. No, it should be, Lord, I thank you for your goodness and your grace. Yeah. Lord, even though everything's going well, I'm thanking you right now. Because I know that if things change, you don't change. Yeah. Oh, come on, church. I, that's how we have to be in every occasion. We need to pray. Then it says what? Stay alert. Stay alert. Stay alert. Somebody says stay alert. Stay as soon alert. as you let your guard down, that's when the enemy comes in to wipe you out. The minute you lay your guard down, that's when he's coming. He's just waiting. Like I said, he's just waiting for you to say something wrong so he can jump in. Stay alert. Somebody say stay alert. Stay alert. And be persistent in your prayers. That means pray even when it's not even right, when you don't feel like praying. Right. When you wake up and you got a backache and you just don't feel like doing nothing, pray. Lord, I know my back is healed, and I, I'm, I'm going to pray for somebody. Somebody needs some prayer. Go outside of your comfort zone and pray for somebody that needs it. Pray for your, your coworkers, your boss that may have cussed you out that morning. Oh, come on now. He may have cussed you out, but you speak blessings unto him so you can have favor. Amen? Come on now. We, we have a tendency to pray for the people that we love and that, you know, our children and people. Right? Pray for those that despitefully use you. Pray for those that you don't normally pray for. Let me tell you something. God will open up a blessing for you when you open up your prayers on every occasion. No matter what. If you broke down in the car, pray to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Come on now. I know that you don't feel like praying. You want to complain. You want to kick your car. Come on now. It ain't the time to kick your car. Yeah. What's kicking your car going to do? Yeah, but right. why not lift up a praise to the yeah. King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who sees, who already knew what you were about to get yeah. through and has a provision just waiting for you. Yeah. Come on now. Pray on every occasion. Yeah. That's how we should be. Every occasion. Yeah. Not just the sunny day, not just the rainy day, but the sunny days too. Yeah. It says pray on every occasion. Be persistent in your prayers 
for all believers everywhere. Pray for somebody. Lift somebody up. Lift your pastor up. I need prayer. Pray for me. Glory to God. I, I welcome all prayer. I remember one time I said I was going to pray for somebody. They said, I don't need prayer. No, you need prayer. That's the worst thing you can say. I need prayer. Pray for your pastor and your leader. Pray for the government. Go outside your comfort zone. And I believe when we open up ourselves in prayer, God's going to open up some blessings yeah. for us. Amen? Yeah. Come on. And when we take our focus off of ourselves, I believe God is going to open up some things for us. Amen? Amen. Pray for believers everywhere. Because there's believers all over the country, all over the world that need prayer. Amen? The same grace we need, they need. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Paul told the church in Ephesus, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. This is not an earthly battle, amen, but against rulers and authorities in high places. We are not fighting a fight that can be seen, amen. Clearly, this is an unseen opposition. And more, it, it, clearly, this is an unseen opposition is, is more than what we can face alone. We can't face this opposition alone. So God has given us the necessary resources, the armor of God, to enable us to stand against the devil's schemes. I love that he doesn't just leave us out there. He gave us the tools and gave us the weapons to fight this unseen battle. Amen? Holly, because the battle is not against flesh and blood, but it is a spiritual battle. This is spiritual warfare. Amen? Somebody say, keep standing. keep standing. Jesus gave us the perfect example of how to deal in spiritual warfare. When he took on the enemy in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, the first swing of his sword was a devastating blow to the enemy. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That first swing of that sword chopped at the devil because his first thing that he did with Eve was he told Eve that she needed something that God couldn't give her. She needed something that God could not give you. And Jesus said, no, God has everything you need. Yeah. Oh, come on now. Yeah. He tried the same trick to, to Jesus. He said, turn these stones into bread because you need to eat. Mm -hmm. No, I need every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Oh, come, oh, come on, on now. Yeah. That first swing of that sword cut the head of the devil. He, he, he probably jumped back a few. Wait a minute. I fooled Eve with this. How are you going to tell me it is written? But think about that. That first swing of that sword set the enemy back. And it showed us we don't have to depend on the enemy. You don't have to take the enemy's job. All you need is every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Because every word that comes out of the mouth of God is true. Every word that comes out of his mouth will sustain you. Yeah. Oh, come on now, church. We don't have to take the devil's job. He said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. We need natural food, but it's the spiritual food that will sustain you. It is written. That first swing of that sword. I love that. Glory to God. Jesus stood so we can stand. Is that all right with somebody here today? Jesus stood so we can stand. I love what it says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Verse 14 to 15. It says, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, he and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. And verse 15, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made public spectacle of them by triumphing over them in it. So Jesus stood so we can stand. He made a public spectacle of the enemy so we can do it. Amen. He said, I can do it now. You can do it. He said, behold, I'll give it. You the authority. Yeah. He made a public spectacle of principality Praise because he knew the right weapon to fight them with. Praise oh, come on now. He had the army. He had the armor, and he swung that sword, and he made a public display of them openly. I love that. He triumphed over them so we can triumph. Amen? And there's a song that we used to sing. I have to find the lyrics. I had printed them out, and I'm going to close with this. I love technology. And there's a song that we used to sing uh, back in the day, and it was a 
Well, it was a song that we used to listen to, and the title is There's a War Going On. Mm. And it's by Walter Hawkins. And I, I remember one time we were traveling down south, and we, back then we only had tape players. So you had to listen to the same 10 songs about 1,500 times. <laughs> Michael laughed because he knows. We were in the car about 1,500 times. We done listened to these songs. And I listened, remember listening to this song a couple hundred times, and it just got into my spirit. I didn't understand what it meant back then, but now as I'm older, I understand. And the song says, there's a war going on. And if you're going to win, you better make sure that you have Jesus deep down within. Mm -hmm. This battle cannot be won with bullets and guns. For the enemy, you cannot see with human faculties. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against rulers of darkness, against rulers of, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It's a fact that Satan's on your track. Isn't Satan on your track? Mm -hmm. He wants to get you. And suddenly, without any warning, he'll launch his attack. So you better make sure that you know that wherever you may go, that you have the sword, which is the word of God, deep down in your soul. Mm -hmm. Is that all right with somebody? Mm -hmm. Oh, this is what you have to know. You can't fight this battle on your own. You need the power of God rooted and grounded in your life. We need the armor. We need the armor of the Lord. And it closes and it ends like this. So we can walk right, so we can talk right, mm -hmm. so we can live right, so we can pray right. All right. Is that all right with somebody yeah. here today? So there is a war going on. Mm -hmm. And if you want to win, you must be sure that you are prepared to stand. Somebody give God some praise. praise. Give God some praise.